You've probably heard a flute before. Someone blows into it, and sound just seems to magically come out. But how does a flute create music instead of just, well, air? Well, when you blow across the top of a flute, it hits the opposite edge of the hole and creates a vortex, causing the air particles to oscillate. This creates sound. Sound looks something like this, with the little air particles compressing and rarefying. Now, in trying to picture sound waves, imagine a slinky. When it is compressed, it has greater pressure, while when it is stretched out, it has lower pressure. Some parts of the slinky largely vary between high and low pressure, while other parts in our standing wave stay the same. When you graph pressure, the peaks and troughs are called pressure antinodes, while the places where pressure is constant are called nodes. On the other hand, if you graph sound as a displacement of particles, it becomes reversed. The pressure nodes are displacement antinodes, and vice versa. If you look again at our slinky, you can visualize this if you imagine the slinky as a bunch of air particles that are moving very quickly at the ends, but not so much in the middle. You find that at each end, the particles tend to be very positively or very negatively displaced, while as you get closer to the middle, they're hardly displaced at all. Now, a flute acts as a tube that is open at both ends. At each open end, the particles are moving very fast and the pressure is constantly the outside pressure. Therefore, each end of the flute is a pressure node and a displacement antinode. This limits the wavelengths at which sound resonates. For example, if we look at this in terms of displacement, each of these wavelengths would resonate, but this one would not, because it does not end in a displacement antinode. But what is the difference between these waves? Well, at a constant temperature through the same medium, the speed of sound is constant. And if you think about it, the speed of sound is frequency multiplied by wavelength. So since the speed of sound is constant, the greater the wavelength, the smaller the frequency. By looking at wavelength, you can figure out that the first note is lower, while the second is higher. It turns out the difference between the two pitches is one octave. When playing the flute, you can go up the octave by increasing the speed of your air. What if you want to change notes by less than an octave? Now, this is where the holes in the flute come in. When you open up a hole, the air comes out of the hole instead of the end of the flute, so it essentially changes the wavelength. The more holes you open up, the shorter the wavelength, the faster the frequency, the higher the note. And what about volume? Note that volume has nothing to do with period and frequency of the wave, but with the amplitude, or height of the wave. The greater the amplitude, the greater the volume. But how do you change this? You can increase volume by opening your lips more and blowing not faster, but larger amounts of air into the flute. So now you know the physics behind the magical music of flutes.